Let's take a closer look at some of the concepts within practice problem one of these uh, determination of compass error by azimuth problems. So here's one. Here's the solution. We did this solution in a video, but there's a couple concepts in here, right? Here's all the givens. They're pretty straightforward. When we found the approximate GMT, we divided the longitude by 15 to get the time zone correction. And why, why does this work, this graph? Let's check that out. So these time zones, they're 15 degrees per time zone. So you start at Greenwich time, right? It's on the prime meridian. It's 0, 0, 0. This is the prime meridian. And it turns out that it's every 15 degrees. But from the prime meridian, the first time zone is only 7.5 degrees. But it's on either side seven and a half degrees so that you land right in the middle and then the next one is 15 degrees and as they go out they're all 15 degrees right so you go from seven and a half over add 15 degrees you get to 22 and a half and then you add 15 degrees you get to 37 and a half so when you take a longitude and in this case the longitude was 76 degrees. So when you take a longitude of 76 degrees and divide it by 15, we got, what do we get here? We got 5, right? So we were west 5. We were, we need to come over 5 time zones. But when you divide it by 15, you actually land like smack right in the middle. Of the time zone. That's why when you get towards the edge, you round up or round down, and it'll put you over into the next time zone. That's kind of the premise of what we're doing with the time zones. Take your longitude, divide it by 15, it'll put you into a time zone. Because if you think about it, like if you're only one over, here you are right in the center. And every time you round, you end up, it puts you right in the middle of these time zones. And the other thing that I want to look at is the chronometer, the chronometer. Why is it only, like it never goes to 13. It, it can never go past 1250 something. It'll never go to 13. It's like an analog clock. When we look at an analog clock, you know, like your analog wristwatch, is basically a chronometer. And as everybody knows, you got 12, 3, 6, 9. But is it day or night? Is it AM or PM? That's the problem. So when we go and we take the cron time, like when we are getting GMTs, we'll get a GMT that might be like 23 hours so we'll have to figure out this cron time so here it was 12 hours but we had to say if we added 12 hours it would be the next day here so we're just figuring out what day we're in and if we're day or night so the ambiguity in the chronometer comes from only having 12 hours but it goes, so it goes around twice in a day. It's essentially, there's like an AM 12 hours and a PM 12 hours, and you have to figure out which one you're actually in. That's where that ambiguity comes from. And that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. I mean, the GHA, here we, we look it up. Oh, that's what we want to look at now. Well, once we get our GMT, Greenwich Mean Time, and the day, then we get our, GHA, which is Greenwich Hour Angle. And where do these come from? So the Greenwich, once we get our GMT, 
we can get the GHA for 12 hours and then the GHA for 5148. So we get that from the nautical almanac, right? I want to explain this nautical almanac to you a little bit. Here we are. In the, this is the increments. It's in the back. So we're looking at, um, where are we? We are 12 hours. In this particular problem, 12, GMT is 12.51.48. GHA for 12 is what we look at first. So we get the GHA for, and the day matters too, November 6th, right? November 6th, 12 hours. So we have to find November, December. So up here are all of the months, days. So let's just find that page. November 6th. November 6th. Okay, here we are on November 6th. There's actually two pages of this November 6th, right? Because we were just... We're just looking at the sun for these problems. And there's GMT, but look at this, moon, and all of these. And on this page, there's, there's stars and planets, Aries, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, stars, and here's a list of all the stars. So let's look at these columns. Dates, November 6th, 7th, 8th, it gives you the day and the GMT, and then the day and the hours. So we're on November 6th at 12, right? So we, we looked up right here, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. So here was our GHA degrees minutes. And then it gave us our declination degrees minutes. And then down here is where we found our D correction. It's right there. And yeah, that's about all I have to say about this table. And then the second part, we found the increments, right? Down here in the problem, we went into the increments. There we are, GHA. So the increments are the minutes and seconds. And so we come to this table, and we were 51 minutes, 48 seconds. So up here are the minutes, and you'll see the minutes are here. And then under the minutes are the seconds. So we were at 51.48. We're way back in this table. Oh, nice flip. 51 minutes, right? So then this part of the table is for 51 minutes. And it gives us the increments right here. And then the corrections for the D value over here. So we're at 51 minutes, 48 seconds. So you go 51 minutes and then see those seconds? We slide down the seconds to 48. And now we have stay in the sun column because there's multiple planetary bodies. And then we were at 1257. So we have 51 minutes down the seconds, 48 seconds, and then we can read our increments. And then our corrections were over here. And in the problem, our D value was 0.7. So here's the D values. But you come to 0.7, and then this is the correction for a D value of 0 0.7. It was 0 0.6. Cool, so that's the corrections. And then, yeah, then we get into the site reduction tables next when we start building this table and we need to get the um the base argument and then from your base argument you get the z this base z or base angle and we had to look up the site reduction tables look in the site reduction tables for this the site reduction tables are kind of crazy there's two sides to it See 309 here? Well, watch. If we flip, it goes up and up and up, and then it goes back down. Watch this. 360, 270. And then it starts going back up again. And see there's the opposite side. If this 53 plus 
307, this is 360. In every case, this is 360. It's one side of the planet, the other side of the planet. And so another thing about this, you see at the beginning of it, it's your latitudes, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. But it stops at 22. If you need to go above 22, you need to go in the other side. So like, like 30, there it is, 308 for the other side. So here we have 308 contrary, 15 through 22. And now we have 308 contrary, 23 through 30. So you have to be in the right side of the book. This confused me at first. And now let's look at, we have two pages for 308 and 52. There's the same, if the declination name, latitude, same name as declination. Latitude, contrary name, declination. So in each one of these problems, we figure out the declination and DR lat. So in this case, it's north and south. They're opposites. They're called contrary. If they were south and south or north and north, they'd be same. But in this case, it's south and north, so they're contrary to each other. So we would always use the contrary side. Right? And maybe we should get on the right page. 300. 1625, 300. So that 25 DR lat tells us we need to be over here. And now 300. Yeah, let's just go to that page. Three hundred contrary, and then twenty. We're at three hundred for contrary. Twenty-five lat sixteen deck. So, yeah, good. Here are here's the declination. Here's the declination column, and in our case. Our declination is 16. So you go to 16, and I like to do that part first and line it up. These numbers are small. And so now you're at all these. So you're contrary, 325. And then here's your Z column in degrees. So you come down to that 16. So we got declination over here. We have our DR lats across the top. Our information about contrary or the same. And here's our LHAs. Either of these, like if we were 60 LHA, this would work too. 60 contrary, but we're 300 contrary. And if you look on this page, this page is for the same. And what's interesting this part I always figure out, this is on every page. See, north latitude, LHA greater than 180, ZN equals Z. But for LHA less than 180, ZN equals 360 minus Z. This information is on every page. Sometimes it's at the bottom, sometimes it's at the top. But what I do to figure that out instead, so here's north 119.2 east. I just create this graph and use common sense to figure it out. If you create this graph and say, okay, you're north 119.2 to the east. So we were north and then 119.2 to the east. We were down here. And so that's our Z. But Z equals ZN. ZN is just from north to your degree. So it was over here, it'd be 180 plus. If it's over here, it's 360 minus Z. But in this case, Z equals ZN. And if we look at it, that's what we get here. LHA, like if you look on, we are the contrary page, LHA, no, these are for south lats. See that south right there at the tip of the pencil? These are for north lats, which we had a north latitude. So LHA greater than 180, ZN is equal to Z 
So we had north LHA greater than 180. And see our LHA is greater than 180. So instead of using this graph, we could have got it out of the site reduction tables, but this, this graph makes me feel good. And as far as this tabulation is concerned, you can kind of understand you go through these numbers to get the base Z. But then you do this, this crazy tabulation where you bump each one up by one. This remains a bit of a mystery to me. I'm thinking that you're getting some averages or something like that, or some increments per day or per 24 hours, what's going on. But if anybody has a good explanation of this triple interpolation and what is actually going on with these numbers, I would love to hear it. Link a video or something or an explanation for me. It'd be great. Um, yeah, that's about it. These problems, they're just, they're basically just a bunch of adding and subtracting. There's a tiny bit of multiplying and dividing, but really, if you can add and subtract and do some multiplication division and look up numbers and tables, you can do these. It's just a few steps. It's not bad. You got this.